first I will show the uh, the part itself. So we are I, I'm doing the demo regarding the uh, React Twitter web part that you can uh, add to your page. So let me add it here. So basically, uh, when you see it, it's PNP uh, React control that shows you that the uh, web part is not configured. So let's configure it. There are multiple options what you can see in your uh, web part, what timeline you can see in your web part. Is it profile, uh, likes, some list or uh, collection or just one URL? So for uh, profile, let me my profile, uh, apply. And you can see all my tweets in here in the web part. Let's change it to be, for example, list. And I know that uh, David uh, has, a, I believe, hockey list. It should be there. Apply. And in that case, you will see the list from uh, David Warner with all the updates that he's collecting around the hockey. You can also change some uh, UI stuff, like it can be a dark theme. Uh, you can hide the headers, you can have some uh, border colors you like. And as you can see, again, I'm using some uh, PNP controls in here. Uh, apply. So it's dark theme. No borders for some sure. Well, OK. Anyway, so this is kind of it, right? So smaller part that just allows you to uh, display uh, tweets. So basically, the uh, code for the part is pretty simple because I was using the um, available NPM package called uh, React Tw Twitter Embed. And uh, it contains basically all the functionality we need to uh, display tweets as a React component. So it also has uh, great documentation with uh, all the like how, how to install, how to use, uh, how to add a timeline, a tweet, and so on and so forth. So basically it uh, describes all the properties that are available uh, in this control. And of course it's MIT license, so you can uh, use it free of charge. And uh, in the code, basically what I've done in the web part, I have kind of a proxy of this uh, uh, React Twitter embed control. Uh, so I have all the properties for this control as a separate uh, interface, as a separate instance uh, in my model. Uh, in the uh, web part itself, we have huge, huge property pane configuration where we're basically just uh, getting all these properties and user can uh, configure all the stuff you just saw on, on the screen. And the uh, component itself uh, from the web part, basically just getting all these uh, properties and calls this Twitter timeline embed uh, component from this NPM package. So as you can see for the uh, control itself, it just like uh, 55 lines of code, and it's just because I like to put every pro property on separate line. Otherwise, it would be like three, four lines of code, right? Uh, good thing of this uh, implementation, of this web part implementation. So it's it's kind of this sample is started because uh, there was a question in uh, PNP uh, reusable uh, controls uh, repo uh, if there is some control to display the uh, Twitter. And I decided to uh, make this demo, but if there is uh, real demand on uh, this functionality, we can actually uh, move this control uh, directly to PNP repo as well. And that's probably it. Uh, it's really small, small demo because not a lot of code, but as you can see, it's really easy uh, to use the um, existing NPM packages, existing NPM uh, modules inside uh, SPFX solutions as well. Now, uh, Alex, don't, don't, don't stop. Yep. Uh, let's, I, I will I take a few minutes of extra time. So first of all, um, like you said, this is a really, really great example on using an existing NPM package and just wrapping that as a web part because it, it is actually quite easy to do. And like you said, your property pane is much more complicated. Can we go back on the uh, on the uh, the web part and the experience? Because just making sure that everybody understands um, uh, the property pane configuration and all of the different options yep. is one thing. And uh, there's quite a lot of different options. And how did you right. make all of those mm. things actually happen? So 
you're using property bank controls from PMP, right? Right. Partially. Partially, yes. Some yes. of those are just out of the box controls. Some of those are then uh, more complex. And then uh, you buy, basically you are just taking these properties and feeding them in the, the end package, which is available from NPM. Yes. Why did you Why did you create the webport? Uh, what was the There was a question, good question uh, on the chat. Hey, there's an out of the box Twitter webport. Why would you? Why, why? So uh, as as I said, there is a there was a question in a PNP reusable controls uh, repo. Yeah. If there is a custom control that allows you to display a Twitter timeline, yeah, uh, and to showcase how easily we can create this custom control, I decided to create the sample with web part that actually inside contains a control. Uh, to be used uh, in your custom solutions if you want to. Yeah, yeah, makes makes perfect sense. Plus the fact that out of the box Twitter web part isn't necessarily as flexible from a configuration perspective. To be right. honest, I can't remember what are the options in out of the box web part, so I can't really compare. But still, um, but yeah, so quite simple stuff. Now, what's interesting related on the on the how did you find the to React Twitter embed um, uh, embed package? Just out of curiosity, because I, I want to actually encourage people to think about these options. There's awesome, awesome stuff in the React based uh, implementations, and any of those components can be actually exposed also as a web part, right? So um, or as part of your web part. So it's really, really powerful to find those things. But what would be, Alex, your recommendation on finding what's available? So, Do you have so a to, secret? To, well, I, I don't have a secret, but uh, to be honest, I think that one of uh, like good stuff for any developer is ability to Google, right? And to, to Google yep. correctly. So basically what I've done, first my idea when I saw this uh, comment, this uh, discussion in PNP controls repo, just to Google and see if there are any React Twitter controls uh, on the web. And basically I saw maybe like three, four uh, different uh, implementations. And this one was really what I was looking for because it uh, has like a lot of uh, different properties and it's React by itself. So it's really easy to use in uh, SPFX. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Makes sense, uh, and and I really encourage people to have a look on what kind of React components are available, rather than always implementing from scratch. And obviously, double check also the license. In the case of Alex, um, it was using MIT license, which means that you yep. can freely use that. Um, so, but it's it's really important to understand what the components do, as well. But I think that's it. Mm -hmm.